Hey everyone, welcome back to Casey 3D Sparks. Today we're going to do a quick overview of the sculpting tools and how they can help you with your miniatures in the future. So to, as you can see right here we just have a regular cube that we're going to start off with and we're going to hop into sculpt mode down here in this menu. And if you just jump into sculpt mode that way it won't really do too much. You can see it's affecting this a little tiny bit but it's not really doing much so there's two options that you can try out first one if you don't really want it to go too crazy with the amount of vertexes vertices that it adds um, you can go into edit mode hit W and subdivide it a few times until you're happy with it and then go back into sculpt mode and you can see that it works much more nicely now it does have a mirror on it which you can just go into the symmetry menu and you can see how it says mirror here you can make it mirror whichever one you want but I'm just going to turn all of those off for the demonstration and of course you know do uh, which whatever you want for the symmetry there now if you don't want it to if you didn't want to go into edit mode and add in the extra vertices that way you can come over here to this menu instead um, one real quick thing though is you'll notice how these are nice squares it you know it, it's nice and square if you come over here and switch on this dino topology it changes everything to triangles and it will actually add as you go so if you oops too far zoom in really close it's much smaller but if you zoom out the triangles are much bigger so it really just depends on how detailed you want to get with it you can go in here and get very detailed um, turn up the strength if you need to turn it down if you want it to be very gentle and of course you know adjust the radius of your brush as you want to um, now I just have the regular sculpt draw this is what you'll usually start with so if you want to change your brushes just click on the picture and all these different options will come up um, I don't use all of them. I typically do the sculpt draw, maybe sometimes smooth or flatten, uh, sometimes clay, but not too much of the others. I'm just not too familiar with them, but we'll go through most of them today. So we'll just kind of go in order. Blob is kind of, you know, obviously it just makes things more blob-like. <laughs> Um, of course, you can subtract it and make it go inward. You could probably make some cool rock formations this way if you wanted. Clay, uh, kind of similar to the sculpt draw, in my opinion. Um, I'm sure it has its other benefits, but I don't use it too much. Clay strips can be nice too. Again, it's acting more like clay. Crease, I definitely do not use a lot, but if you need some cool creases, then there you go. It's probably a little bit easier than to sculpt it out, or um, model it out. Uh, let's make this radius a little bit smaller. Fill and deepen, I think you can get the idea there. Um, obviously these buttons change to fill and deepen, so... You could have some fun with that one if you're making some sort of canyon or vice versa. Flatten, obviously, flatten will make a surface nice and flat for you. Or contrast, you know, you could bring it out and that's actually kind of cool. Make cool little divots that way or make your edges sharper, that kind of thing. Grab, pretty straightforward. You can go ahead and grab that pull it out if you need to. Um, it's pretty similar to snake hook, but snake hook will bring it out and you can actually, it's much, much more dramatic. Um, so yeah, grab will pretty much just grab the mesh that you have and snake hook will bring it out drastically. You can make some crazy stuff with snake hook. Um, probably good for some like uh, horns or something. Inflate, deflate, kind of similar to blob in my opinion again, um, but I'm sure you could have fun with that one. Layer, I don't use too much either, um, but that one is kind of cool. I bet if I was making some like landscapes or something and needed a mountain range to pop up, like that would be really cool. Mask, 
Uh, I don't use this at all, actually. I'm not really sure what it is supposed to help do, to be quite honest. Nudge, uh, it kind of just moves it around. Um, so if you just need to nudge some stuff, like if you're modeling a character, and it's like, oh, I'll just nudge the vertices, um, could be a little bit easier. Pinch, uh, very clear, kind of pinches them in. And of course, magnify will do the opposite. Rotate, pretty straightforward. You can rotate it, the buttons disappear because that's all it does. Scrape can be kind of cool if you're like just going through again, like you want to get rid of some of the stuff or peaks. Whoops, there we go. Peaks bring these up quite a bit. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, sculpt draw, we, that was the first one we did. Smooth, obviously, will smooth it out. Very nice. So that way, it's like, all right, it's all too rough. Let's just smooth that out. Bring that in. Oh, that's not very smooth. There we go. Very quick. And then snake hook we went over. And thumb is kind of like nudge, but a little bit different. You're kind of like using your thumb and going in here and moving it around a little bit differently. Um, so those are all the sculpting tools. Like I said, it'll be a very quick demonstration of going through it. But now I'm going to switch over to one of the models that actually is in my shop right now, the fountain model, if you're familiar. I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to check that model out. But uh, we're going to open that file and test out some of these tools. Okay, so as you can see, I already opened up the fountain and I already sculpted out some of the stones. I don't know how happy I am with it. It's very rough, but at the same time, when you 3D print something, it's not going to be as defined, depending on what printer you use. Of course, if you use a resin printer, then it'll probably be very clear as to all these little divots and stuff. But if you're doing plastic like I usually do, it probably would be fine. You could probably even make this more dramatic if you wanted to. Um, so I went all the way around, I think. I did. Yes. Okay. So if we go in here, you can see this is a very dense mesh. There's so many vertices in here. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but in order to get it detailed, I mean, sometimes we got to do what you got to do. So let's go out of edit mode and go back in to sculpt mode um, and we'll edit this bottom part. We're going to make it kind of look like paper stones um, around, circling around here. So it'll probably be, you know, similar in size, but not perfect by any means. And if you wanted to, you could probably cut this into a quarter and only model out a quarter of this but I'm not gonna worry about that today I'm just gonna do a portion of it and then see how it goes so I have it in sculpt mode let's go let's see can we do top view no top view is not very clear so we'll just do let's start at this y-axis so I have sculpt on I'm gonna change this to subtract turn my dino topology on and it might be a little bit slower since I have so much going on right now. But let's change this a little smaller. Ooh, that's too small. Alright, that's good enough. We'll go in here. We'll probably zoom in so that way it doesn't affect too much on the top. And we'll go let's sculpt it. And I'm not going to worry about the bottom too much. I can always flatten that out later. Um, Let's make sure we'll get this nice and divided for the stones. And then go here, get this corner to go in. And this is something uh, with sculpt mode, it's a lot less strict. It's very free form. So whatever method you find might be a lot different than the way I do it. But this is just, I just kind of go in have fun like you're playing with clay essentially uh, and don't be scared to go into add and add in depth 
as well. Like this could raise up if you want. Um, since it is kind of a bigger piece, maybe you'll want to add it this way, like go a little bit bigger, bring it out. Just kind of smooth it out a little bit since that is a bit bumpy for a paper stone. Usually they're not quite that dramatic. So we'll go over to, where is it? We'll go over to smooth. Gosh, it's right next to it. Turn the strength down a little bit because that's a bit much and smooth out a bit of what we just did, but not too much there. Because you still want it kind of dramatic looking in here because again, when you print it out, it probably won't be as dramatic. So we want it to be just enough uh, kind of in between. So we'll do this and go back to subtract, zoom in a little bit, and there you have it. And there's the beginning of your pavers around your fountain. So again, I'd probably recommend cutting this into quarters instead of modeling each one. That way you can only just do this little section here instead of the whole circle. And then once you're done with your stones down here, you can add the pavers up here. And then if you wanted, I'm not sure what I wanna do to the rest of the fountain yet as far as detail goes, but probably end up coming up here and doing something to this top, maybe look, making it look more like an artichoke or Coming in here and adding in some vines or something. Let's see. So it'd be kind of interesting. Snake it down. Make it look like it has a little leaf. <laughs> I haven't tried this at all yet, so it's not quite how I pictured it, but not sure what I want to do for the decoration yet on this but something that kind of just comes out of it would be kind of interesting and a little bit different. Um, just so it's not as plain, looks more decorative, like it go, could go in the center of your city, that kind of thing could be nice. So that's it for today. I know a little short, um, but this is more of a fun tutorial to show you how to use the sculpting tool and it's really just playing around. It's a lot of fun to use this tool. Um, I hope you like it. I hope that you'll get some good use out of it. I mean, I mainly use it for stone so far, but hopefully I'll be able to add in some decoration here and you'll be seeing this in my shop in the near future. Thanks again for watching. I will see you next time. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next time. If you if you want to do a different model or you're interested in other things, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. See you next time.